Task Force Z, issue 10, Matthew Rosenberg writing with Eddie Barrows on the art. Uh, I don't even know what's going on in this book anymore. I'm a- <laughs> yeah, so in the last issue, we had um, the, the rev- revelation that Bane might not be Bane all the way. Oh, like, yeah. And by the end of this issue, we find out who, why? who it is, is because it's yeah. not Bane. So this is not revealing that Bane wasn't Bane before he died. That was still all Bane. But this is just some somewhere after Bane died, yeah. he has been switched. So the actual corpse running around with the Bane costume on has not been Bane. It is, in fact, Gotham. Right, as in Gotham Girl in Gotham. The brother who's been dead. And uh, <clears throat> so it, it flashes back to when, when this whole Task Force Z idea is going around with Two-Face and Waller and that they want to use like basically the idea of Bane, but they don't want to use Bane himself, right? Was that the vibe you were getting? Yeah, part, part of it also is because they, you know, they wanted to, um, yeah, they wanted to control him better. Yeah. They also like had the thinker pl- you know, plant like subliminal like messages in Memories. a lot of their heads because yeah. at one point in Bloom in this issue shows up and like says like a little like poem and it, it triggers everyone to like turn on Jason for a bit. Except for Grundy. He says Grundy's still Grundy. Uh yeah. and that, that made me laugh for whatever reason. I love Solomon Grundy. Yeah. And and, but, and the whole thing is just that Bloom's there to kidnap one of the twin scientist yeah. ladies uh to, to help them with what they're to working further, on. Yeah, to further whatever he's doing. Yeah. Um, I, I I'm gonna be honest though, I, I've kind of lost track of what the motivations are of Bloom and who he's working for. <laughs> Bloom, for me, Bloom's doing his own thing, and the fact that he he brought back Kirk from a severed head, right? We still don't really know how he did that. That's still been, you know, keeping to him. We still don't know what Bloom actually is, right, at this point. Like, um, and just the, the longer this book goes, the more chaotic it gets, but I also kind of like that, that it, it's just telling the story of... of when you start getting in, involved in these, you know, resurrections and, and how messy all this is. Like, it wasn't just, you know, putting an undead team of villains together like we thought at the beginning, right? It's become much more of, you know, there's ethical questions. And, you know, when you had Two-Face into this and, you know, what his role in all of this was and how he dealt with Waller um, and just the whole idea of, them wanting to to use the idea of Bane, but that was mainly to control Jason and why, right? Like, why why is Jason so important to this? Um, is one of the questions that that's still out there. But but yeah, it's kind of messy. But I I feel messy in a good way because I still feel the intent here with Rosenberg with Bloom and I mean um, like I had a decent time powers. reading that. I'm still kind yeah. of into the absurdity of it. Yep. Uh, but I, I will say that, you know, as time goes on, like, I'm losing track of, like, what each, like, group is trying to achieve and, like, yes. what the point of certain things are. Yeah. Uh, but then you get to that final page, and because t- there's a whole thing about, okay, we've got some random corpse to be the, mm-hmm. this, like, fake Bane, but it's like, yeah, but how many people could be as big as Bane and could, like, deal with, like, the, the injection of the venom and stuff like that? So at the end, when it's revealed to be Gotham, it's like, oh, okay, I guess uh, he could take that. Because <laughs> right. he's got them, he has powers right. and shit. Right, right. So, so, but yeah, no, it it's fun, but it's a mess, and yeah, I'm curious to see where it all ends up. Was this ten? That's position ten, yeah. Yeah, so we have, we have two left. He can still, well, he can still stick to landing once all is revealed. And Bloom's so creepy. I'm doing that poem, and all of them flipping. So that was, you know, sufficiently creepy. I think. Yeah, you also had, like, in the flashback where they were setting some of this stuff up with uh, Waller there. Mm-hmm. Like, Waller, like, be all the protective of her, like, her Suicide Squad members by, like, because yeah. some- one of them, like, threatens them. I think it's Bloom yeah. threatens one of them. And she's like, don't you threaten one of my people. Mm-hmm. And she's like, but they're maniacs. Yeah, yeah but they're my maniacs. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's very much a Waller line, right? Uh, like, yeah. So. But, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have a whole lot to add about it. Uh, I just I just thought, like, okay, where's Bane then? Because there's this whole mm-hmm. plot through Joker, I remember you covering, of, of cloning Bane. Right? And you have the have Vengeance character. Mm-hmm. And then they killed off Bane at the beginning of Joker War uh, when, with the Arkham Gas Lake. 
Oh yeah, so that, was, that was that was before Joker though. That like that. Is that... that... Yeah, because yeah, yeah. Joker spun out of that afterwards. No, that's that's what I mean. Yeah. So you have you have him dying right, seemingly in in the the A Day stuff, and then they they're cloning him, Joker, and now here, you know, is is Bane still out there somewhere? Is he gonna make a a, a stir? You know, well, no, because make... they've got his corpse in this. Like he's he's on the other table because they're transferring his memory to Gotham. They say that. They say that this tech is transferring oh, the, the memories to the dead guy. Ah, oh, shit. Shows you, shows you, this is the first thing I read this week. Uh, I forgot that scene. Yeah, I got so, so caught up in, in it being Gotham. Um, well, damn it. Just bring back Bane, please. I like Bane. That's all well, I was going to I'm in no rush. We got plenty of villains to use. <laughs> no, I know. But, you know, he's just one I like. That's all. Oh, yeah. What are you giving uh, Task Force Z? I'm mean, giving this a 7. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I'll give it. I'll just a bit give it a 7 as well. Uh, obviously, Barrow's art is still fun. Uh, yeah. it's, it's got that moodiness to it. Um, you know, it's just it, the book is a bit messy, perhaps, for its own good at times, but mm -hmm. uh, generally, the, the brand of crazy that's in it is entertaining. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, 7 out of 10 for me.